What's going on guys? I'm Firefly and it's been a while since I've talked to you guys. I've been kind of busy but um, I wanted to do a little something for you guys. Um, just a tutorial. Uh, try to get back into tutorials again and this time I'm gonna bring, bring, blah, 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 be bringing you guys a 3D modeling tutorial. And what's really cool about this tutorial is this program is completely free. So I have the trial version and the only thing you can do in the trial version is save your project files. You can render out everything, you can do anything, everything the full version can do except save your project files. So that's pretty cool. I don't have to pay full price for an awesome 3D modeling program. And let me tell you guys, this program is awesome. It's so powerful with what you can do. And I just got it three days ago, so I'm not the most biggest expert in this program, but... I'll be sure to uh, show you guys what I can do. And this tutorial is just going to be showing you basic modeling stuff, uh, wh how to use it, and yeah. This program is called Cheetah 3D. I'll put a link to the description where you can download it and try it out for yourself. So let's go ahead and get started. So up here we have our toolbar, and this is the most important thing um, in this program, is the toolbar. You'll do everything from here. Over here you'll see we have a properties panel and that will change depending on what tool we use. We have the tool panel and we have the object browser. So let me go ahead and drop in a ball. And as you can see our object browser got a ball and we have different properties. So here I can change the scale of the X, the Y, and the Z axis. Uh, we can change the radius we can change the amount of sections, as you can see here. We can change all sorts of stuff in here. Uh, smooth. Anyways, and then another important thing is uh, how to navigate around the workspace. And before I go any farther, I'll tell you guys that this is a Mac-only program. So yeah, all the commands will be in Mac since it's a Mac-only program and I have a Mac. So. To, z to rotate the workspace, hold Option and just drag your mouse. Okay? And Option is the button next to the command. It's the button left of the command button. To, to pan, so like to like scroll across, you hold Option and Control, which is right next to Option. And then we can pan like this. To zoom, you can just scroll. Okay? Like that. So yeah, let me just set this back so we have a full sphere, okay. So now you'll see that there's this thing in the center of the sphere. This is how we move the sphere and rotate it and scale it up. So as you can see, this box, the boxes here affect the scale. So if I click and drag, it'll affect the scale. Okay, the arrows move it up in any direction you want. See. And that applies with this blue one over here, too. Okay. And then the sphere in the middle is to move it in any direction at the same time. These lines are to rotate it. As you can see, that rotates it. And that, that goes for any direction as well. Okay. pan up. Okay. So now what can we do with this sphere? Well, there's a lot of things we can do. For one thing, let's add a box. Let me put this box over here. Let me move this box like this. We'll move it down like this. Okay, we have a box like this. Now what's really cool is what we can do is we can go up to here in this menu. Here we have some adjustments in this menu and here we also have some adjustments that we can do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a boolean on here. And then what we do is I can do this, this, and you see it cuts out the square from the circle. And it all depends on the order you put it in. So if I put the ball in first and then the box wait that I did the same thing if I put the box in first then the ball 
as you can see it cut out the circle from the box so that's pretty cool so now if I remove this now if I remove the ball I can show you some other pretty cool stuff if I go into my second adjustments menu and let's say I do where's the taper there it is taper so now all of these adjustments you need to group with your object what group means is you have to drag this on top of this okay so now our taper our box is grouped with our taper I think I did that the wrong way the taper should go in the box yeah okay so the box has the taper has to the adjustment has to be grouped with the object so now if I move this taper around what's really cool is it morphs the box as you can see so that's pretty neato and then what I can do is I can go to my taper properties and I can increase the s decrease the strength and whoops check that out you can make a pyramid that's pretty neat isn't it so if I remove my taper now what I can do is, um, what else can I show you guys? Well, there's a whole bunch of stuff. If we put a subdivision, that'll basically make it all smooth. So now we've made a circle, a sphere, I mean, sorry. Um, we can, some other pretty cool stuff you can do. Uh, here, I'll show you. If I remove this and this. Let's see, I, I make a cylinder. Oops. I make a cylinder. Like this, and then I make it. Oops. I should, uh. Yeah, decrease the radius like this. So now we have a sphere like this. I mean, a cylinder. Wow, I can't talk. Anyways. And then we do, like, ring. See, that'll just make a ring of those, and. I can increase the radius, I can increase the amount of them, so that's pretty neat. What else, oops, what else can I do with this? If I increase the radius of this again, I can, uh, what I can do is, if you double click on this over here, it makes all of the polygons in the object editable so what I can do is I can go and here are a bunch of different options I don't know what all of them do yet but there's a ton just play around with them if I do a cover on this and a cover on this that'll it'll basically do like it'll um, like it's kinda hard to explain but it'll like stop the polygon where it is so when you extrude it with if we do I think it's normal move. Pardon me. That's not what it is. I'm still pretty new at this, so bear with me. We um Wow, I look really stupid now. I think it's extrude. What the heck? Okay. No, I already did that. Ah, okay. Ooh. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> Oh wait, I need to cover these. Ah, there we go. I knew I was doing it right. Okay, so by covering it, it prevents it from moving the rest of the polygon with it. Okay, if, and then if I do this... Okay. Okay. So now... Okay, I'll just take this example, and what I can do is I can add a 
had a subdivision as you can see that makes it all smooth okay that was my long-winded explanation anyways what I really wanted to show you guys is text so if we go into our spline menu here I don't know why it's called that it's just called spline so now we can add text and as you can see it says text and that's pretty boring so what we can do is we can go under the properties here go to text drop down menu and we can change the text I'll just call mine Firefly for sake and font is also here whatever I don't want to change the font and then what we can do because this is pretty flat and boring so what we can do is we can go into our properties and do extrude and then if we put the extrude under text wrong way text under extrude then we've extruded our text and then we can change the amount of it's extruded and so on and so forth so yeah that's pretty basic so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a little cool little trick so I'm gonna go and add a plane I'm gonna increase the size of the plane move it over here scale this up that didn't work too well okay like this and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert this to caps because the Y gets cut down by the plane cut off by the plane. Okay, there we go. Now what I can do is go down here and you see it says material add material. So if I add, let's say let me just add like a material like this. And then we have all these settings up here, so I can change the color. I'll make it like, I don't know, like this color. I can add the reflection like this. See now down here it's changed and now it's really reflective. And I can add all this stuff and then if I drag it here onto my plane, when we render it, it'll look really cool. So I have this. Now what I can do is I can add new material, but there's some defaults down here. And that's really cool too. And my computer's lagging. Hold on. Okay. Um, bear with me. <laughs> okay. There's this cool camouflaged one. And I can just add that on my text. And I think that's pretty awesome. So now, if I go up here to my render. So that's pretty cool. See there's a reflection, but I don't really like that reflection too much. And I don't like this black background, so I'll show you how to fix that. So if we go to this right here, if we click and double click on this, we can edit the material that's used on the plane. And what we can do is we can reduce the amount of reflections. And what we can also do is change the color of the reflections slightly. And as you can see, that kind of lowers the reflection. And then if we reduce the amount of specular and add a bit more blur, see that blurs the reflection. And then I don't, I said I didn't like that black background. So what we can do is we can click on our camera in this object browser and see background and change this poof to white. There we go. So now if we render our scene, that looks 10,000 times better already. And as you can see, that camouflage text looks really cool. So that's all I'm going to do for this tutorial, guys. Um, if you want to learn more, just tell me in the comments what you'd like to see, and I'll surely do it. And one last thing, if you want to save this render, you can just go here, save. And the trial version lets you do this, so it's awesome. And there's a ton of more stuff to cover as I learn more about this program. So if you guys want more, as I said before, just tell me in the comments below. So thanks, guys, and I'll see you guys later.